the game of hockey itself, sports in general, is great for kids. Uh, it keeps them with other kids. They learn how to work hard. They learn how to prepare. They learn what pressure is. Uh, they come to an understanding of what being unselfish means. You learn how to win and you learn how to lose. And it's all part of life. That's the real world. But what we've lost a little bit of and is playing on the pond and just going out there and using your creativity and your imagination and, you know, doing things with the puck and learning how to make funny plays and good plays and creative plays. And we've lost a little bit of that imagination and creativity. So it's become too robotic? It's very much more robotic because it's more systematic now. And if you go to a PB hockey game here in Toronto probably, uh, these coaches are systematic now. And you play left wing, you play your position. You play right wing, you play your position. Uh, I don't know if a guy like Paul Coffey or myself, we could play in this era because our creativity would have just naturally taken over. But when it puck drops for a game, our jobs are way overrated. And what I mean by that, I think there's been an influence of, of football coaches, basketball coaches, especially where I am in the United States, that, that they think that, you know, football coaches, you see them drawing up plays and firing them in and yelling what to do, and basketball players running up and down the court, basketball coaches, sorry, running up and down the court with their team, even like getting in a defensive stance and giving numbers like this is the, these are the matchups I want and this is the, the play we're going to run. And I think there's been some of that has crept into hockey. Coach brought out a board, talked on the board, sent two lines off, threw the puck in the corner, said go, and nothing happened. No one knew what was going on. So he got mad, sent that line off, brought another line on, same thing. Nothing happened. Then what he did is he drew on the board again, threw the puck in the corner, said defenseman, you go there. Defenseman, you go there. Winger, I want you on the hash marks. We're on that hash marks. And he took a centerman and he, and he guided him where he wanted to go. And it became apparent that what he was doing is he's trying to execute a specific set breakout, a specific set system. He was trying to execute it. He'd, he'd basically tell them what to do. Okay? Shoot the puck in. D, go get it. Center, go this way. D, go. And, and so he got them to do it, but it was all linear. It had no chance of executing a game. But tell me about the game that you learned to play by playing outside. A group of us would gather, there could be 15, 20 players. We'd, two teams, drop the puck and away we'd go. And if you didn't learn to skate or handle the puck, it wasn't much fun for you. And that's how we learned to play. Everything everything was shinny. 10 or 12 aside, no coaches, no, no, no referees. No referees. No, uh, no out of bounds. <laughs> no out of bounds. Just, just skate, skate, and you skate. just go, go, go. And, and uh, uh, you know, when was the last time you, Watch a group of kids, just the kids playing uh, in a parking lot or whatever. We just don't see it anymore. We the kids are waiting to for organized hockey all the time. And you see coaches yelling direction to the kids, often to the extent where every kid that touches a puck, he'll yell what to do. Pass it to Johnny. Pass it to Johnny. Go D to D. Fake and go wide. Fake and go wide. Fake the shot. Like they yell directions at kids throughout their. The, the whole time. I think that's doing a real disservice. Hockey is about reading and reacting. Okay, It's not about listening and doing it. To develop Gretzky and Jordan type skills, he talked about doing it in scrimmage and then and then Don Hay talked about cross-ice games and hockey IQ is reading and reacting. So I tell you what, one thing I do know, you don't you don't learn hockey IQ by yelling at a kid and telling him what to do. But we just that's how we learned. That's how we learned to play the game. We just dropped the puck and, and we had fun. Uh, uh, no problems. Are we suggesting in this that they're kind of overcoached? And I don't mean that in a sort of negative way about coaches, but it, overcoached. There's too many systems. Oh, absolutely. Within the absolutely. Within hockey, minor hockey. I never heard of a system when I was growing up. <laughs> Imagine me playing in a system, Peter. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> uh, I might get benched today. Uh, but no, I mean, uh, you, I mean, you hear of, of, of Pee Wee coaches teaching the trap. What the heck are we doing teaching a trap? Let the kids go. Let them have fun. That's how you improve. And there's far too much coaching with our kids. Absolutely. And when it came to his power play, he had a belief that the best power play is one that's very creative. And spontaneous and that's the most difficult to defend and so in 94 well they had the number one power play in the NHL and they didn't practice any offensive options it was all creativity For my generation growing up we heard all the time go north south never go east west go north south well what did Gretzky do when he got over the blue line do a Gretzky delay right 
Another thing we heard all the time, you want to score goals, go to the front of the net. Heard that all the time. What did he do? Went behind the net. So not only uh, was he not listening to his coaches, he was probably doing the exact opposite. So if we were to yell at these guys all the time, I think it's a real disservice. And what happens if you get really good at it? What happens if you're effective as a coach? Every time you yell at a player, they do exactly what you do. What are they going to do when you're not yelling? I, I have, has anybody, to get back to that not yelling players, have any of you ever gone and watched a great coach? Like, not watched the game, but watched a great coach. Bought a ticket, I went to go watch Hitch. And bought a ticket, got my little notebook out, sat there the whole game, and I watched Hitch. And you know what? It was really, really boring. <laughs> it was... No offense, but it was it was a waste of fifty bucks. <laughs> he didn't do anything. He didn't he didn't yell at his players what to do. He didn't run up and down with a board. None of that stuff. It was boring. Another philosophy that you got to take to heart is that, and it was said Don Don Hay said it as well. Unless you're coaching in the NHL, a big part of your re responsibility, a big part of your job, is development. They want to know how well those guys' habits equate to everything they do. So really keep that in mind. That, that's, that's really important. You have, to, you have to work on the habits. You have to work on the things that are going to help players at the next level. That's what development is. So be serious about that. Think about that. Think about where you spend your time in practice and how you spend your time in practice. Are you just lurking on systems? Are you working on habits that, that will help them? Really work on establishing the mindset. Really skill focus. Skill, 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 skill. And... You know, the question, is it winning or developing? I honestly can't even imagine winning without developing. I, I just can't imagine it. You've got to get the most out of your player every day. And you've got to get them better every day. You can get as mad at them as you want, but you've got to be better tomorrow. This is how you were yesterday, no problem. This is what you've got to focus on today. You keep getting yourself better, your team better, you keep developing skill, you're going to win. So it wasn't their system that was superior. Mike Babcock won in 2008, lost in 2009 to the Penguins, and then hasn't been in the Stanley Cup final since. It wasn't Mike Babcock's system. It was the skill. You make your players better, whatever system you want to run, I guarantee they'll run that system better. So, I, like I mentioned last night, I work very little on systems. I do it more on video. And I work very little on systems. The first thing, I, I use the phrase competitive spirit. You know, some people just say compete level, whatever it may be. For me, it's the foundation of excellence. If you don't have it, I think it's hard for you to even be in the conversation. Puck possession skills are critical to the types of players that we're looking for in our organization. The elite players, they think the game fast. He's got to compete, he's got a willpower, lots of skill, lots of good hockey sense, two uh, things that we like. Well, I think what we saw first of all, and more importantly, hockey sense at the highest level. Well, like I said, we, we love his hockey sense. I like the fact that he can score in traffic, and uh, he's got good hands, he's got a great release, and he likes to shoot. He's versatile, he's competitive, we really like his brain too, he can think the game. He wants skilled players that make plays.